Case of Quigging. The government of Canada is back in the business of lending excess cash out to the banks. This according to a statement on the Bank of Canada's website. Oh, f*** you. Yeah, and while the government lending out excess money isn't anything new, it hasn't been done since August of 2020. And as such, the resumption of this program is being called another step being taken to inject money into Canada's system. Really? What was the first? Indeed, if you'll remember last month, the Bank of Canada engaged in its first overnight repo operation for the first time since 2020, injecting liquidity into the banking system when the overnight rate got too high for its liking. And with the government now resuming its lending into the banking system, Scotiabank says this might mean the Bank of Canada is more hawkish than many people think, meaning we could be much farther away from those rate cuts that so many are anticipating. So what I want to do today is go over the government lending program that is about to be resumed, take a look at some implications for the banking system as a result of that government lending, and then discuss what to look for next. As mentioned, this story goes hand in hand with the repo story that we've been covering on this channel. With the Bank of Canada removing liquidity from the system, stresses are starting to show up. We will continue to track both stories on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into the government lending. Onto the government lending program. As mentioned, the Bank of Canada is reintroducing the morning auction of the Receiver General Cash Balances. Very few would be aware that this program existed, as it hasn't been used since August of 2020, due in large part to a lack of participation. So what exactly is it? Well, as you might imagine, the Canadian government at any point in time has any amount of cash reserves sitting on hand. Cash which isn't needed at that particular time. And while this might seem counterintuitive, as the government is currently running a deficit, spending more money than it takes in, it's very similar to households, in that, although you might get paid on Monday, your car payment isn't due until Friday. So, during those four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that money is just sitting in your checking account. And the government has that money sitting in its checking account and is now going to be lending it out. Prior to its suspension three and a half years ago, the program, says the Bank of Canada, ensured sufficient cash flow was available to meet the government's operating and liquidity requirements while investing excess cash balances in a prudent and cost-effective manner. But the government doesn't just lend out this excess cash, it does so by asking for collateral vis-a-vis -a, -vis a reverse repo, which very well may sound familiar, as it's a program where their banks or other counterparties sell securities or bonds to the government in exchange for cash. So, under the overnight repo agreements that we discussed previously, the Bank of Canada bought up securities from the banks in exchange for cash with the agreement that the banks would buy them back later. Under this system, the government of Canada is buying securities off of the banks and the banks are agreeing to purchase them back later. They want in on a going thing. And what are these securities that the banks are using as collateral to borrow money from the government? Mostly government bonds, but also mortgage-backed securities. Mortgage-backed securities which are guaranteed by the government. Yep, that's right. The government of Canada is going to be loaning money to the banks. The banks are putting up collateral. Collateral which, if not paid, is guaranteed by the government of Canada. Makes a lot of sense. So, in summary, the government is going to be lending out cash to the banks, to the banking system, rather than just having that cash sit in its account, not earning interest. The banks get liquidity, and the government gets a bit of interest. But let's take a look at the implications. As mentioned, the government suspended this program back in August of 2020 as very few banks were interested in participating. Why borrow from the government when you have $300 billion sitting in cash in an account at the Bank of Canada? And that is really the point of the video today. In that, three and a half years later, it now looks as though there is renewed demand on the part of the banks to borrow money from the government. Hi, Sam. Derek Holt of Scotiabank says that the move from the government is probably designed to address some of the problems in the funding market. Those problems that we discussed when we went over the Bank of Canada's overnight repo operations. And while the government stepping in to provide liquidity to the banks is definitely curious, as that's technically a job for the Bank of Canada, Holt says that this points to the argument that the Bank of Canada won't be ending quantitative tightening as fast as some are anticipating. Indeed, says Holt, Doubling down on QT while relying upon a complex patchwork of funding tools like repo injections in this latest step could be an implicit signal they are nowhere close to easing, if not inclined to tighten further. I never promised anything. For its part, National Bank agreed, noting that the reintroduction of the cash auction program, lending money to the banks, allows more run room for QT. 
QT, quantitative tightening, if you'll remember, that's where the Bank of Canada allows the government of Canada to pay back its bonds, to pay back the money it owes, but the bank doesn't buy any new bonds. So when the government borrows from the market to pay back the Bank of Canada, the Bank of Canada takes that money, and that money basically disappears. This is how the Bank of Canada removes liquidity from the market, removes cash from the system, which is supposed to help lower inflation. So, what Holt and National Bank are saying is that the Bank of Canada, rather than ending quantitative tightening, rather than completely stopping the process of removing all that cash from the system, the government will be providing some overnight cash, some cash to the banks, if need be. It's never ending, you bullshit. So, the government is going to be lending more money into the banking system, and I think there are two great big implications for the move. First and foremost, I think the biggest implication is that there is demand for this money in the first place. We saw the Bank of Canada have to do its first overnight repo operation since March of 2020 on January 3rd of this year, and now, just a month and a bit later, we're seeing the government coming up with new plans, more plans, to get money into the system. I'm sure it's nothing. Although the overnight repo operations and the cash auctions are indeed signs that the banking system is moving back to where it was pre-COVID, as argued by the Bank of Canada, as we've discussed on this channel, what is not normal pre-COVID is any of these operations having to occur when the banks still have $111 billion in their accounts at the central bank. Why is the government having to engage in these methods, what Scotiabank calls a patchwork of funding tools, when the banks still have $111 billion? And secondly, there was obviously a decision made somewhere, by someone, to have the government intervene into the banking system, rather than have the Bank of Canada end quantitative tightening. This would have also added money to the system, or, at minimum, just stop draining it. As such, this shows, again says Holt, that the Bank of Canada could be farther away from ending quantitative tightening than many are anticipating. And with the end of quantitative tightening usually being a precursor to the lowering of interest rates, we could be farther away from those rate cuts that again, many have been anticipating. So, in the first month of 2024, we saw the Bank of Canada having to engage in multiple repo operations, getting money into the banking system vis-a-vis -vis overnight loans. The media, for almost three weeks, completely ignored the move, and the Bank of Canada said that everything was back to normal. And now, less than a month later, we have the government announcing that it will also be lending money into the banking system, while the Bank of Canada maintains quantitative tightening. And although that program isn't anything new, the banks did used to have demand for that money, they didn't have $111 billion on hand when they were demanding that money. Something isn't as it was pre-COVID, despite what we're hearing from the powers that be. With that said, we will continue to track the government and the Bank of Canada's efforts to get money into Canada's banking system on this channel, and the effects stemming therefrom. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.